On Sunday in France, a coalition of French left parties banded together, and the result was Marine Le Pen's National Rally Party fell far short of winning an absolute majority. And now, in an attempt to make sense of it all, is Rebel News reporter Alexa Laval, who is in Paris right now. Well, Alexa, I've been watching your reports uh, from France with great interest. First of all, what did you make of the election? There was so much hoopla that this is it. There's going to be regime change. Uh, Marine, uh, Marine Le Pen is going to form the next government. Didn't work out that way, did it? So what I make of all this, first of all, uh, they don't have the majority. So, of course, uh, it would be difficult to do any change in the system or to vote any law or regulation. So a lot of people on the ground, they believe that, you know, France would just be our friends is uh, for the next year because it would take a year before um, the government in place will be allowed to dissolve the the um, the parliament again. So right now we have a left um, government. A lot of people think that it was a uh, vote on democratically because uh, of course Marine Le Pen won way more votes than anybody else. Uh, it's just the fact that the vote was not as much concentrated in some area, so it was spread all over France. And uh, and the thing is, they have a two-round system. So for them, it was easier to plan like a kind of strategy to make sure that they would counter the right-wing party of Marine Le Pen. And Alexa, this election was the result of Mr. Macron saying, you know, calling a snap election, uh, which is always very risky. Uh, I imagine he must have some buyer's remorse, too. But in the same time, yes, probably, because, you know, he called for a snap election. A lot of people on the ground say he did the worst mistake for himself uh, because uh, last election, he had a hard time to get um, to get vote. Like it, it, he didn't have as much a stronger um, support from French people on the last one. So of course, with the fact that Marine Le Pen was polling so high and the fact that she 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 had like so many seats at the uh, European Parliament, uh, I think he did a great mistake. But I think he was playing his card as. Uh, if I don't do it now, I'm going to lose and stronger uh, if, if, if I'm not doing it now. So now I think he's trying to do a coalition with other the, the left party, I would say, because right now, as I say, he decided to keep the prime minister in place uh, uh, at all for making sure that the country is still stable over this uh, crazy, chaotic election. So we'll see if they will keep him like in place or they will change it after a while. But a lot of people on the ground, what they express is like they think that next year or in two years from now, they will have another election. That, that as, almost for sure. You know, that's interesting, Alexa, that you say that there are people uh, saying uh, that there's some stability right now. But I, I see a lot of reports of observers saying uh, for the next several months, maybe in, even for two years when the next election takes place, um, that there is a lot of political and even economic uncertainty. Uh, France is the second biggest economy in Europe. Uh, what are you hearing from your sources there? Of course, there is some concern, uh, especially about immigration, I would say. Uh, a lot of people are kind of uh, scared that they will have more immigration. So, of course, a financial cost that will come with it. Um, they will have, like, uh, probably, you know, probably spending for climate change or other policy that the um, Nouveau Front Populaire uh, stand for. So 
there is, I would say Paris, it's really from the left. Mm. So on the street, doing streeter, I, it's almost one side of the story. So trying to dig and to dig and to find some people who are in the other side, it's really difficult. Um, what I saw so far, like, you know, like on the night of the election, when I arrived on the scene, uh, because they were supposed to have a gathering at the National Assembly, afterwards they didn't have like the permission to do it. So they moved to the Place de la République. And w- my first impression when I arrived there, first of all, the crowd was, was really, really young. And there were a lot, a lot of Antifa flag and Palestinian flag, but I didn't see that much friends. Like <laughs> that surprised me because we know how France is. Like France used to be so patriotic, so like proud to be French, you know. And and, and it's not what I felt. I it's not what I felt at all uh, on that crowd of young people. So um, I was able to interact with some of the people on the ground to ask them a couple of questions, but. It seems like, first of all, because, you know, Marine Le Pen have expressed that with the government of the um, Nouveau Front Populaire, the right of uh, the property, the property rights might be reviewed under the uh, Nouveau Front Populaire. So um, I asked them, like, if they, are, they, they have any concern about it because they are young people, you know, and... What I receive as their answer, they say, I don't care if you don't own anything. Like, I don't care if you don't own like a property or a home. Anyway, right now, I cannot afford a home. So I was like, I, I find that pretty shocking because, you know, as a young per- person, you want to work hard. You want to own like your own home. You want to be independent. You don't want to just keep like renting all the time. So um, I don't know what you make of it, but I was kind of surprised because, you know, um, Quebec is kind of like a small detach of like France, but we, we, we have like the same kind of um, patriotic feeling. And um, I know that a lot of French Canadian wants to have a home. They want mm. to have a property. And, and to hear that from really young people, like I would say they were like, 18 to 21, 22 years old, to hear that from them, I, I find that kind of shocking. Yeah, you know, that is incredibly interesting. I mean, of course, Alexa, the globalists, they say uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. Looks like mission accomplished in France, at least for the young people. They're on board. But you did mention immigration. This is a very hot button issue, as it is in so many other Western nations. And I really thought... This was going to be the policy platform that would say, you know, swing the pendulum uh, for Miss Le Pen. Uh, I, I've been watching your reports. I, I saw one. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but I remember you interviewing a, a gentleman originally from Africa. And I, I'm, you know, the gist of it was the French, you know, centuries ago came into Africa and, and stole from us, exploited us. And now we're coming here. I guess legally or not, I was uncertain. And we're, you know, trying to get a bit of the pie back. And, you know, I just found that disturbing that, you know, it was, um, you're almost a citizen based on a confrontational revenge kind of basis as opposed to being, uh, you know, a, a, a proud new Frenchman. Est-ce que vous comprenez le pourquoi qu'elle veut arrêter l'immigration pas. massive? Ils, eux-mêmes, eux-mêmes, la cité leur a demandé pourquoi. Eux-mêmes, ils ne peuvent pas te dire pourquoi. Parce que eux mêmes qui veulent arrêter l'immigration, c'est les immigrés aussi. Vous ne pensez pas que ça a rapport avec le fait que, justement, euh, les, les immigrants qui rentrent ont accès à tous les services, qui re- font un fardeau fiscal voilà, à la population? Voilà, bon, là, maintenant, on rentre dans le politique du fin fond. Je vous explique le fin fond, c'est quoi? Qui a ramené la guerre en Afrique? C'est les Français. Pourquoi? Pour aller voler nos biens. Nous, maintenant, on est venus ici pour venir récupérer nos biens. Voilà, donc, tu ne peux pas nous chasser comme ça. Donc, vous, bah, vous pensez bah, que vous avez un droit à qui? Bah, bien sûr, on a un droit à qui? Parce que ici, on est dans le pays des droits, droits de l'homme. Can you uh, weigh in on um, why, I guess, immigration, uh, well, according to the numbers, uh, it, it, it isn't as much of a concern that so many observers thought it was in terms of giving uh, Le Pen uh, the government? 
But I would say that it, it is a concern for everybody because so far they say, yes, we want like a legal way of immigration. Of course, we should like be more, uh, have a structure for immigration and we should be like more focused on like, you know, growing economy with our immigration. But the thing is, they say that, but what they say also is say that Marine Le Pen, she's a, a Nazi and she, she's a racist and, um, that she don't she don't want any any immigration and and they say that she's the the kind of person that wants to deport everybody when she never never ever say that she never mentioned anything to deport massively everybody she didn't mention to completely stop immigration she just say that we need to be more careful we need to have like a stricter uh immigration policy uh she say that we they will remove the right of the 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 ground or the right of the sword that we say um and she say also that some of um, sensitive work will not be permitted to people who have double nationality so it's mm. what she say so far, but she never say we will stop completely the immigration. And she also say that people who want to apply for having like French citizenship at 18, they will be allowed to do it and they can receive it if they didn't have any criminal record. So if they have criminal record, they cannot have their French citizenship. Well, you know, Alexa, I'm always baffled by this um you know, moral equivalence on the left, that if you want strong, secure borders, therefore you are a racist. I would argue if you don't have strong, secure borders, that's the very first litmus test of being a nation. And if it's a porous uh, boundary uh, or border, uh, then you really aren't much of a real nation to begin with. But moving on, I, I think we discussed in the morning meeting, uh, you were going to ask... Um, uh, I thought a very interesting question in your next round of streeters. I don't know if you've done it already, but it was the idea of if Napoleon were alive today, what would he say about the situation in France? What say you, my friend? Oh, yeah. So some people have said that it would be probably terrified <laughs> or some people are say probably disappointed. Some people have bring the fact that he was a dictator and that he was not really a good man. Uh, of course, like that's come from, you know, the leftist people. Uh, some people have said that they have no clue about it. Uh, um, it was, um, really a diverse, like kind of opinion. But I want to add something today. I went to, uh, homeless encampment and what I want, want to bring into, uh, the viewer. It's like since it's like the Olympic Games, I don't know if you can see like yep. there's a, the Olympic Games coming up. Uh, first of all, they have moved all the encampment of uh, homeless people. But what I saw so far is like in the homeless encampment, it, it's mostly migrant. Mm -hmm. That is different of what we see in Canada. Most of the, of the people in Canada, we, I saw a lot, a lot of like just, you know, Canadian. But here it's mostly migrant. And today I spoke, uh, a long time with uh, someone from Nigeria and is here since four years but since two years his refugee claim was re was rejected and so he's, he's living in France illegally since two years and, and only now that encampment's uh, removed because in less than three weeks the Olympic Games takes place in Paris and I gotta tell you um Alexa, with all the problems France is struggling with, the idea of hosting the Olympics, I mean, what were they thinking? It, it, you know, talk about bread and circuses as opposed to using uh, this money, because like all host cities or nations, it's going to be a multi-million or perhaps even multi-billion dollar debt. Um, what is the mood of the people uh, in France in terms of, as I said before, given all the problems affecting, you know, everybody who lives almost, I would say, in France, that there's enough money for this extravagant sporting event? Um, I would say at the some people have expressed that it's not the good time because the nation is not really uh, stable. There is a lot of polarization, a lot of uh, split in people in two kind of party. Um, this someone today 
um, and so to me, like not only record, but it was explaining that now the center, when you are from the center, it's that the right wing hates you, the left wing hates you because <laughs> you're not you're not taking like any side, and so this is the opinion of one man in the street, but probably. I know that a lot of people today uh, censor themselves. They don't want to um, show their color. They don't want to show their political uh, color. They, they don't want to speak that much about everything that is regarding politics. I think a lot of people are struggling like to pay rent and to pay like, you know, daily life uh, bills. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really sad because when I ask them, like if they are ready to pay more tax to receive more immigrant and most of them were leftists some say yes and some say no we cannot afford it because right now i i have a hard time to to pay my bill at the end of the day so hosting an event like uh, olympic and by the way i don't know if you you know about it but in at night apparently uh coming from uh, some of uh, the people i know in paris the Eiffel Tower is not safe at night. Apparently, there is a lot of uh, theft. There is a lot of, of like you know criminal activity, and so um, and and some of pe- uh, the people are concerned about maybe like the fact that a big concentration of tourists will be in Paris and in France. Some of the people will come into Paris that live like in the suburb or in the neighborhood, uh, and there will be a lot of increase of maybe theft or other like kind of, um, you know, like incident. And uh, I don't think the friends uh, that French people wants to see more and more, you know, media attention on the bad side of Paris friends. Mm. Well, Alexa, we're running out of time. Uh, one quick question, uh, especially pertaining to Paris in the nighttime and uh, criminal activity. Um, the Antifa types amassed and they were ready to riot if Le Pen uh, got that majority. Um, that coalition of leftist parties, as we mentioned right off the hop, they were successful. But these guys still went out and did some rioting, I understand. I, can you explain to me what the mentality of these people are? Maybe it's a little mom pa business. They can't afford the plywood to put up in front of their shop window. And these hooligans and thugs kick in the window, steal the inventory. I just think that's an absolute disgrace. And I've heard of sore losers, but sore winners? Alexa, last word goes to you. Yeah, so I spoke with one of the shop uh, manager and they say that 4,000 euro was spent for uh, plywood for their window. Um, some, uh, like every shop, mostly in Champs-Élysées, um, they prepare themselves because it's not their first rodeo, I would say. Um, <laughs> but uh, where where they actually did the riot was at the uh, Republic Place. So I saw a lot of city bike. You know the city bike that you you pay and you take and you just like bring it back afterwards? A lot of them were just, I don't know if they were ripped off because I'm pretty sure they didn't put, I'm pretty sure they didn't put like the credit card for it. But (laughs) some of the the city uh, bike were, were, were Start, they started in fire in the middle of the street or they, they were found everywhere just like throwing away and like really uh, just for damaging them. Uh, uh, I saw like window being smashed. They were throwing a glass bottle of, of uh, beer to the police officer. Um, there is, there, I saw trash everywhere. So my point is like I thought that the, the left people were caring about you know climate change or you know being environmentally friendly but it's not what i saw yesterday it was like you know like just putting trash everywhere graffiti vandalism and they were just like you know this the, the the street is is at it's for us you know mm-hmm. and and i was kind of shocked because it's completely the opposite of what they used to vi- virtually 
Unbelievable, Alexa. Well, listen, I want you to stay safe. You're sending in some fantastic uh, reports. You're doing great journalism on the streets of Paris. So uh, again, Alexa, be safe, and we'll look forward to more of your reports in the days ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. The leftist party have won tonight. We don't know yet what will happen for France, but I think it was important for us to be here. I encourage you to follow us at, first of all, ribbonnews.com, but if you want to support my journey and my work with my colleague, Guillaume, just right there. So please go over friendsonfire.com, Keep in what you can, support our independent journalism. We don't receive any money from the government. And I think this is just insane what is going on in France. And I just hope that they will not have more riots uh, in the future like that, because I never experienced that in my life. So please go over friendsonfire.com. Follow me on, on Twitter, The Voice Alexa. And I see you tomorrow for more story.